I'm one of five children and we were raised in a very loving and warm environment. My parents were both incredibly hard-working, old-fashioned people. My dad was a first-generation migrant. Nicola Mary Gobbo was a bright kid, born into a loving family. Her uncle was a Supreme Court judge and a Victorian governor. Her high school teachers described her as reliable and eager to please. She studied law at Melbourne University, then made a name for herself as a criminal lawyer who got her clients bail. As Melbourne's feuding gangland factions escalated their deadly war, Nicola was front and centre. She knew and acted for all the big players, Carl Williams, Tony Mockbell and crime patriarch Louis Moran. In 2004, Nicola Gobbo had a stroke. She felt threatened by some of her notorious clients and turned to police. She met with detectives and began passing on top secret gangland information. Incredibly, she was still practicing as a lawyer. Gobbo became a registered police informer. It was dangerous work. She helped bring down gangland heavyweights and put them behind bars. She would later claim her information led to 386 arrests. The double dealing went on for at least four years. Right. Nicola Gobbo, thank you for talking to 7.30. Thanks, Rachel. I've come a long way to ask you this, and everybody wants to know, why? Why be an informer? Um, well, it's, um, it's, a, it's a complicated story, um, but the easiest way for me to put it is that um, it began as an ethical and moral um, dilemma for me. Uh, knowing that people were going to be murdered, um, that morphed into a dependence upon Victoria Police, um, or a small number of Victorian police officers. They made it clear to me that if I didn't continue to assist them and to do what they asked, they would release my name and effectively feed me to the wolves. Are you in hiding? Yes. Yeah. Well, we, uh, as in myself and my two young children are presently stranded overseas. Um, it remains their belief that they were chased out of their home by police that are trying to take their mummy away. And that um, to any parent is beyond devastating. I find myself some days um, thinking this is just um, an unbelievable nightmare that there is no end to. You've been described as a liar, someone desperate to be needed, psychologically unhinged, a manipulator. Is any of that true? You know, I've been, I think I've been called everything under the sun and I don't, um, my self-worth and self-belief has been destroyed over the last, particularly over the last 12 months. So to a degree, it's kind of, I don't want to sound like I don't care because Deep down I do, but it's like water off a duck's back. Um, psychologically unhinged. Simon Overland said you had a personality disorder. Yeah, well, Simon Overland should look at himself. Um, I, I mean, there's obviously a lot I would, I am keen to say about, for example, Simon Overland. Between 1998 to 2010, at least 27 criminals were gunned down in Melbourne outside their homes, in supermarket car parks, in front of their kids. Police were under enormous pressure. The infamous era was known as the Gangland War. Several families were fighting to control the lucrative drugs trade. Victoria Police used unprecedented resources to try to stop the so-called underbelly murders. They squeezed anyone they could for information, including Nicola Gobbo. Police gave me the impression that they had an almost an unlimited budget, that there was nothing that they couldn't do. Did you sleep with any of your clients? No, I, this is, again, this is a topic that the Royal Commission haven't, um, haven't covered um, in any way yet. 
And what about police officers? The Royal Commission has heard that you slept with four police officers. I don't know anyone else in Australia who has had their sex life or lack thereof um, splashed in the media as much as mine purportedly has. If you don't go into detail about it and you take it as a general proposition, then it doesn't sound great. Um, but when it's someone who has nothing to do with anything at the time, then what difference does it make? Did you do drugs with your clients? Never. I tried um, cannabis and amphetamine when I was a university student, got in trouble with the police, um, and that put the fear of God into me. Drugs don't interest me, but more particularly because I'm um, O negative and I was a blood donor for many years, um, your blood is screened and tested for everything. You once told a handler I may as well traffic drugs for them considering what I've done for them. What did you mean by that? I, I assume um, that what I meant was um, by um, facilitating them, um, a large number of them being acquitted or having charges withdrawn or thrown out on legal technicalities. In the lead up to you becoming an informer, there was a huge breakthrough in the underworld war and a hitman agreed to roll and testify against Carl Williams. Did you encourage him to do that? He expressed an intention to take a particular path and I didn't talk him out of that. In order to, um, to act in that particular client's best interests, it meant that I had to lie to other people such as Carl because they were actively seeking that I pervert the course of justice and break the law by misrepresenting that accused and by stitching him up in a way that if he ever decided to give evidence that his evidence would be worthless. As it, as it went on, um, there were people for whom I'd acted um, who decided that they were going to pursue the same course as that first individual. And um, if they sought to speak to me, then that made life even more complicated for me. You could have walked away, you <clears throat> could have become a prosecutor. Well, I couldn't have walked, I, I felt like I couldn't, have, couldn't walk away, um, not without consequences anyway. Um, and again, I'm not saying that's, you know, in hindsight, I should have, perhaps. What started as a simple request by police. So we have to get up there and take them off the How many, how many weeks did I walk the room for? Turned into an avalanche of intel. Informers have what's known as police handlers to look after them and extract information. It wasn't unusual for Nicola Gobbo to call them upwards of 10 times a day. Did you start giving them information because you thought they had stuff on you? I genuinely don't believe that I had committed a crime um, or that I could be liable to be charged with any offence. But um, one of the pressures at that time, the gangland war period, was <clears throat> police executing search warrants on solicitors' offices checking money in trust accounts. So. Um, I made the assumption that, as, as a number of lawyers did, that our phones were being unlawfully monitored and that, of course, pe pe things can be taken out of context. So I think the police, um, they certainly gave people such as myself the impression that they had, um, that they had stuff that they would use. What started off as a, um, a threat which was uh, people like you end up in one of two places which is either prison or the gutter dead with a bullet in you. Once it started there was the threat of well you know you've only got us to protect you and if you don't do A, B and C then we're the only thing that stands between or any criminal or alleged criminal finding out what you're doing. This went without saying if we tell anybody um, you'll be murdered. You've said you became an informer to stop murders, but the information extended to mobile numbers, car registrations, purchases at Bunnings for drug labs. How can you argue that that information directly saved lives? 
Well, I, I, I um, it morphed from one thing into um, something completely different, um, but um, and the, the example you give about um, phone numbers, um, that was a police request. That was a specific request. Surely you would have to take some responsibility. There, there were times that they suggested you take a step back and you pushed forward. When a drug cook was arrested, you, you said, who's next? That comment is taken totally out of context. Um, I think that was in the back of a police car after 36 hours of no sleep, having had my life threatened. I have read reports that you craved affection. Um, you wanted to be the best source that Victoria had ever had. I think, um, I, I don't know, I mean, I look back, I think, from what I've learned now, I think they probably groomed me from day one. Um, I mean, there's some suggestion that I was a registered informer in 1995 or 96. 95 and 99. Um, well, 1995, I don't know who I was informing on when I was cooking chips at the MCG um, and studying full time. So you're not aware that they registered you in 1995 and 1999? I learnt that from the media for the first time. Is that dangerous, registering an informer who doesn't even know they've been registered? Of course it is, but police do it all the time. I'm sure they're still doing it now. Do you believe in the concept of legal privilege? Yes, Rachel, I do. Then how could you betray your clients? Well, I think it's been grossly um, misreported and is perhaps misunderstood but an analogy for you is if you came to me and you were charged with murder and you sought my advice in relation to um, how best to achieve the best outcome for yourself and in the course of talking to me you told me all about your mate uh, Bob who had um, guns hidden in his house for an armed robbery that he was about to commit. Um, anything you tell me about your murder charge is subject to privilege and the privilege is yours. But anything you tell me about Bob and his guns and his armed robbery is not privileged. It can't be. Most people would think that they would walk into a room and talk to you and every conversation is privileged. That's not what the law is. Well, did you breach legal privilege in your informing? It was certainly a, an issue that came up from time to time with Victoria Police. And there, were t there were times, and I'm sure they're on tape, where I would be saying, no, I really shouldn't explain that, or I can't go there, um, or I can't get to that part. And they would circle back and come back to it and approach it in a different way. What about conflict of interest? How do you explain a way representing people whose information helped get them arrested? What Victoria Police maintained with me was you don't be the judge of the veracity of something, the usefulness of it or what we will do with it and you don't filter things. You just tell us, um, tell us everything and let us decide on what we do with anything that you say. So as an example, there are people who I have never met, never heard of, who um, have been convicted of offences where arguably the, um, the inception or the, the first bit of intelligence may have come from me, but I had no idea that they were even part of anything. Do you know of other lawyers acting as informers? Um, I believe there is at least one who is still practising, yes. I'm guessing you won't ever say. <clears throat> I, again, haven't been asked by the Royal Commission. Drug dealer Terence Hodson hired Nicola Gobbo. He was about to give evidence against two detectives for a million dollar drug house burglary case when he and his wife were shot dead. Victorian detective Paul Dale was a prime suspect and was friendly with Nicola Gobbo. She agreed to wear a wire and record Paul Dale to help police gather evidence. Police alleged the recorded conversation confirmed Paul Dale was involved. But the key recording turned Nicola Gobbo from secret informer to public witness. In 2009, Dale was charged with the Hodson murders, but the charges were later dropped. 
a key witness against him, gangland boss Carl Williams, was bashed to death in prison before the case reached court. And Nicola Gobbo refused to give evidence against Dale due to ill health and went on to sue Victoria Police for failing to protect her identity as a witness. It was reported she won almost $3 million in damages. Paul Dale has always maintained his innocence and vehemently denies any wrongdoing in the case. At an inquest in 2015, the coroner said he wasn't satisfied on the evidence that Williams or Dale were involved. Did you know the Hodsons were going to be murdered? Absolutely not. Detectives investigated suspected that you were partly responsible for the leak of his informer status before his death. The Did you? whole world knew that he was an informer. The, the fact that he was murdered wasn't a great, wasn't a great surprise. Um, the method uh, or the way it happened, definitely um, appalling and shocking. Um, but not surprising in the context of the way he was living his life prior to his murder. And I don't mean to speak ill of someone who's deceased, um, but you know, he was, it was known that he was assisting police. He was also um, selling drugs, um, uh, running his drug trafficking business with the imprimatur of Victoria Police. What about the allegation that you passed a police file detailing his informer activities um, from Paul Dale, a man that was charged with Hodson's murder, to Tony Mockbell? Well, that's a, um, ridiculous, but it's a question that I haven't been asked by the Royal Commission at this point. One of the officers you arguably got too close with was Paul Dale. What was your relationship with him? No, Rachel, that's a matter that's um, literally currently before the Royal Commission, so I can't, um, I can't talk about any detail until my um, witness statement is finalised. Are you able to say whether you slept with him? Um, yes, I did. In 2008, you wore a wire and recorded a conversation with Paul Dale. Did you offer to do that or did Victoria Police ask you to? It's not as straightforward as that, Rachel. The short version of a long story is that um, I was manipulated and pressured by the Homicide Squad. On that recording, Paul Dale told you that Carl Williams' statement was very accurate. Um, it was almost like he kept a diary. Now, police thought this information was gold. At the time, did you realise the gravity of it? I just thought it was the um, ramblings of a the normal ramblings of um, someone going round and round in circles and none of it meant, stood out as anything particularly significant. It was the police that went berserk about how incredible it was a couple of weeks later. Five years later, in 2014, came this campaign to name her. It sparked a four-year court battle to reveal the informer dubbed Lawyer X. Take us back to the 30th of March 2014. You get a call from a newspaper saying it intends to name you the next day. Did you think this was your death warrant? I can't put it into words how um, frightened I was that this particular journalist n not only said, I'm going to put this on the front page of a newspaper tomorrow, but the information I have is accurate because it comes from a Victorian police officer. Are you scared someone might try to kill you? I will always live with the um, concern that, you, I mean, you can't control what some crazy might do. Um, but the best thing I can do is to be in a known environment where I can know that someone doesn't look right and that there is someone that's out of place or something not right in terms of the way things appear, as opposed to when you're in a foreign country or another place that you're not familiar with, where you wouldn't have a clue. So there's always going to be a risk, um, but my greatest fear is the police themselves. To, to kill you? Well, to either to kill me or to lead, to lead to a position where I am killed. 
You know, most people would find that staggering because you've represented the likes of Carl Williams. So you're saying you're more scared of the police? My fear of them was replaced by um, f uh, fear of police, which has just grown over time. Look where I am, Rachel. I mean, I am, I am stuck. I went from being effectively feeling like I was controlled by one to being um, manipulated in a much worse way um, by a, a huge organisation that's got more power and is more dangerous than any purported or alleged criminal. I'm not saying I don't bear some responsibility at all, but I think, um, you know, knowing what I know now about their tactics and about obviously what happened as time went on and, you know, I got played. Do you feel guilty? or ashamed. My overwhelming guilt is for what my children have had to endure. My, my overwhelming guilt, and I'll spend the rest of my life regretting it, is that something I did, or on whatever way it turns out um, to be judged, because it won't be me judging it, um, has had the, the impact on them. They weren't even a foreseeable um, being at the time. Do you feel guilty about any clients? I don't know that guilt is the right word. Um, um, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of the right way to put it. Um, I suppose if I had my time over, I would do things very differently. But then on the other hand, I think what choice did I have in respect of what some people said in front of me. And morally and ethically, um, I felt like I had no choice. Several of Nicola Gobbo's former clients will be appealing against their convictions. One man, Farouk Orman, has already walked free from jail. The Court of Appeal ruled his case was tainted because of her involvement. What can you say about that? Nothing, because it's not something I've spoken to the Royal Commission about yet. Are you able to say how you feel about his acquittal? Um, I don't think he should ever have been convicted in the first place. Why is that? Because the evidence against him was, um, as I understand it, was um, weak to say the least. And I don't think that um, he, as an accused, was um, was provided with, I don't know this for a fact, but um, was provided with all of the exculpatory material that he should have had. Do you think criminals will be released from jail because of your informing and how does that sit with you? If they are released or have their convictions overturned, um, then Victoria Police have really got themselves to blame. And I'm not trying to say I played no role in doing anything and that I have no responsibility for anything. Um, but ultimately, anything that I did or said or was told to do was with the imprimatur of the Chief Commissioner of Police. The Royal Commission has also heard that you might have burgled a fellow barrister's chambers. I, just, I don't, this is just, um, um, no, I did not burgle anyone. There's also been allegations you boasted about altering witness statements, that you accepted fees from clients, then told their secrets to police. Are you worried about facing criminal charges yourself? Anything that I did or didn't do um, was at the behest and control and with the full knowledge and imprimatur of Victoria Police. So if I'm to be charged, then um, I suppose we'll be in the dock together. Will police charge themselves? I doubt it. I, for example, believe Victoria Police have committed a significant criminal offence, but I'm actually unable to report the fact that they've committed the criminal offence. The way in which the law operates is I'm, I'm the one who will be committing the crime even if I report it to anyone. Last week, the Royal Commission confirmed it will force Nicola Gobbo to testify. Ms Gobbo will give evidence by telephone 
commencing on January Wednesday the 29th, 2020. This interview was taped prior to this decision, but Nicola Gobbo explained why it's been challenging to give evidence. It's very frustrating from my point of view for the perception to be that I, that I am a liar and I'm trying to avoid giving evidence. For months and months it frustrated me, I was manic about it, um, I couldn't sleep um, and I was obviously angry about it, concerned about it, um, but over time that has changed into um, um, suicidal thoughts, obviously no suicidal action, um, severe depression and um, frustration at the idea or the, or the prospect that my version or even the details of some things are just going to be swept under the rug. Why are you talking to me and not the Royal Commission? Well firstly you came to me um, and I might for the record indicate not where we're residing but um, it, and you were able to understand that it was something that could only um, be done for a couple of hours in a very short period of time um, because of issues to do with my children and there was um, someone who genuinely loves and cares about the children who was also prepared to travel to a foreign destination to care for those children while I could while I talk to you. How much of your time does the Royal Commission need? Um, well, firstly, Rachel, in order to produce a witness statement, um, I would conservatively guess that that would take me um, a thousand hours, and that I, I mean a thousand hours without being interrupted, being mm -hmm. able to concentrate and not being in pain, um, and then um, an opportunity to review the what I understood some months ago to be 30,000 pages of material. What kind of pain? It's Physical um, pain? It is um, called neuralgia, but it's basically, in, in layman's terms, it's nerve pain. So it's constant acute pain in the um, facial muscles on both, both sides of my face, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's since your stroke? That's since July. Um, 2004. Right. Um, it feels like um, birth or labour pain for any woman who's watching. It's that exquisite um, pain that means you can't concentrate and you feel like ripping, I feel like ripping my face off. I have been told, um, as have my lawyers, that if I return to Australia, um, the police will arrange for DHHS to remove my children from me immediately. Why? Victoria Police maintain that the children are potentially at risk and that that potential risk is so great um, that nothing that I do uh, would, would ameliorate that risk sufficiently and that therefore it's in the best interests of the children to not be with their mother. We are effectively stateless. We have no rights because obviously we're foreigners and we can't obtain residency. Even if we wanted to, we can't. I have been snookered by Victoria Police. Um, banished from Australia, the ultimate threat you can give to any parent and the two most precious things um, in my world are my children and you threaten to take them from me, um, nothing much comes close to that. Isn't there a risk if Victoria Police is right, if someone tries to kill you, that your children might get caught in a crossfire? Um, I suppose there will always be a degree of risk um, as, there, as there is for anyone driving a car. It's a question of um, how, what steps you can take to minimise that risk. It's not the first time that they threatened me in relation to towing the line and doing things their way or they would take my children. Um, when my, one of my children was um, five months old, 
and I was pregnant with my second child. And it was on the basis of <clears throat> that um, I needed to enter the witness protection program immediately or um, authorities would be involved in removing the child from my care. And before you go on, in case you do want to go on there, I, it's illegal for me to know whether you're in the witness protection program and I won't be asking any questions if you are, so I just wanted to say Rachel, that. Rachel, I um, have never been in the witness protection program and I never will be. The very same organisation with the very same people who have put me in a position where I am um, alone, vulnerable, um, terribly lonely um, and with the care of um, two dependent children, there is no way I would trust them. A lot of people will say, tough, you did this to yourself. It's not my place to try and convince people um, to form one view or another, but I think there wouldn't be anyone, if they're honest with themselves, that hasn't made a mistake in their lives or that hasn't done something um, and, and it had um, totally unexpected consequences. What do you want from Victoria Police now? Um, to be left alone. I mean, obviously there'll be um, some significant civil proceedings on my behalf that are underway. Are you saying you're suing Victoria Police? Absolutely, yes. What's your biggest regret? Um, believing anything that Victoria Police ever told me. Nicola Gobbo, thank you for talking to 7.30. Thank you, Rachel, and I um, have much more to say. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.